beautiful people. So, <sighs> something new is happening here. Um, and I'm really excited to be doing this actually. So I've challenged myself to a 10 day challenge over this portal period from 1212 to the solstice on 2212. Um, I keep talking about all these changes and I've got to bring them through into the real world. And um, I'm really excited. I've been inspired by a couple of the girls I've been journeying with over the last, um, over the last few weeks. One is doing like this 30 day self love challenge. Another is doing an integration challenge. And um, I was like this, I need to do something, but it's not that. And so what I want this to be, this beautiful 10 day container is me just being of complete service to whatever you need. Hey, Anthony, I love it. My brother, we've been journeying hard for, <laughs> um, down here in Melbourne. So. Um, yeah, so this is a container for for you and also for me because I'm calling myself out on having not been live a whole ton, especially over the last year. Hey, Julie, um, where are you these days? Um, so I'm in Melbourne. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's been going on for me, um, where I'm at, what we're doing, what we're not doing. And this challenge is, um, I want to be really clear up front, I'm not selling anything. Um, often I've done sort of five day challenges or 10 day challenges. I once did a 66 day fucking gratitude challenge, which is just a little bit bananas. Um, but I don't actually have anything to sell. So, um, surprise, um, this really is about being in full service. Now I always am selling my Akashic Records programs, um, my abundance cores, you know, that stuff's available for sale all the time. I have some one-on-one -on -one available, but I don't have a big launch coming up. There's no program. There's no, um, sales pitch happening at the end of this, um, 10 days. I really do. I want it to be in service to you, but also it's a massive service to me because for me, part of the thing I've been working on is stepping into my power, stepping into my truth, my reclaiming my voice, being seen, which has all been part of my, my big journey anyway. But it's like this new energy, it's this new layer that I'm stepping into. And um, I noticed that I've been, what I would almost call myself as, um, call myself out on really, um, is not being in my full power and not speaking out and not always speaking my truth. I think I feel like I had so much to share and so much was changing so fast that um, I was like, where do I even freaking start? Like, I'm not the same person as I was yesterday. Where do I start? Because there's so much going on. There's so much to share. Um, and also I felt this year has just been, and I'm sure all of you are feeling this, is it's just been massive. Like every time, like I was, I had big shifts in Sydney before I even left in February. Um, and I was like, all right, I'm good for the year. 2018 is my year. Um, don't give me sad faces. Give me happy faces or hearts, please. Um, um, and yeah, comment. Let me know where, right? Like, Julie, where do you start so much? So there's so much happening. And by the time I maybe catch up with my girlfriends, work with my coach, service my actual clients that are in my programs, my portals, um, and there's just been so much going on energetically that I just, I didn't know where to start and what to say. So um, I'm here and this is what we're going to do over the next 10 days. So I'm going to be sharing some of my core beautiful learnings um, over the last um, year, four years, five, 10 years. I don't know. We'll see um, what, what all comes through. But I want it, you can ask me for what you want me to share. We're going to do some meditations, some maybe some activations, some channeling through the records. Um, so we're coming into this beautiful, really gorgeous portal um, over the next 10 days. And this is just going to be the perfect time to clear, shift, manifest, heal, do all these beautiful things. And I have this opportunity. I also have some time on my calendar. And so I just want to be here and do whatever you guys need, want, request. Plus, I already have a pretty solid list of ideas. Um, uh, hello, love, Antoinette. Um, I also have a pretty solid list of ideas of what I want to cover myself. Um, so I have, I did actually write a few notes because I don't want this to be a complete waffle for 10 days. I do want it to be, um, I want it to be of service and a little bit curated, but the idea only literally came through to me last night. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Um, so if you have questions on 
anything, I'm happy to answer them. I'm a pretty open book on all things. My clients know that. Um, and I'll just tell you a little bit about who I am. Some of you, I'm seeing some names that I haven't seen for years. I'm seeing some family. Um, I'm seeing some gorgeous clients, um, past, present. Um, so um, I'll give you a little update who I am, what I'm up to, um, what you can ask me questions about, what my areas of expertise are. Um, and then I'll, I'm going to dive in today and really talk about the, this energy portal, um, the 5D stuff, spiritual awakening, um, ascension energies, and we'll talk a bit about what we're going to cover over the next 10 days because I'm really excited. Um, and it just like, I was almost so excited last night actually that I couldn't sleep. Um, I was like buzzing because I was like, I actually really want to do this. I actually really want to do this challenge. And nobody has made me, I'm not, I haven't had people sign up to it. There's none of that. It's just me being excited and wanting to share. Um, so if this is something that inspires you and you want to go and do it, take this 10 day challenge as well. Um, but there's, there's no obligation. Plus I'm going to be giving you some, maybe some suggestions or bits of homework, things to do, um, over the next 10 days. So we can, um, just see how we roll, right? Like I'm all about flow, which is sometimes an excuse for just not planning shit. <laughs> and just trusting that the exact things that come through will be absolutely perfect. Oh, thank you, my dear. I appreciate that. Uh, please share on how to integrate new energies. All right, we will definitely um, talk about that for sure. Oh, how cute is this, by the way? I went to um, a Boho Luxe market on the weekend and picked up some really um, cool stuff. Um, all right, so yeah, special request, let me know. I might have to come back and I'll make a few notes of it. But last night I was so excited. I was still awake at um, late and I looked at my phone and lo and behold, it was 1.11 a.m. on the 12.12 portal. And I was like, what? Of course that's what time it is as I'm lying in bed, sort of. And it's really fucking hot here. That's the other thing. So I was going to do this outside. I was going to go to the beach. Um, I'm in Melbourne at the moment. Um, hey, Hannah, love. Um, and I was like, this is going to be great. I'm going to do it by the beach. It is so freaking hot here today. Like, there's no way I'm doing this outside. I'm even sweating inside. I had the aircon on earlier. And I think that was maybe one of the reasons I was so um, awake last night. But so I woke up, well, looked at my phone at 1.11 a.m. on the 12.12. And, and suddenly this energy started buzzing through me. And I was like, oh, interesting. This is what's going on. And so I'm lying there and I'm starting to see flashes of color and it's like um, a dark rainbow, like a sort of kaleidoscope of dark rainbow and neon colors. And like just flashing, my whole body started buzzing, my heart rate went up, my hands were tingling. And I was just like, okay, breathe, 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 breathe. Because this beautiful portal, there's a lot of new, exciting, um, ascension energy is coming through lots of light and so you might be experiencing some of this stuff and if you don't know what the heck is going on it can be really scary um, and and quite confronting you're like what the heck is going on so we'll talk a bit about that kind of stuff um, but yeah just chuck your comments um, in and and we'll, we'll see how we're going hey Melissa love um, one of my gorgeous clients all right so uh, okay, so a lot of you know me, some of you won't. Like, <laughs> I was just looking, I was like, I nearly have 5,000 friends on Facebook. That's a lot of people. Um, and um, yeah, so you may or may not know who I am. I'm feeling very anxious today, not my usual state. There's a ton of energy, so it's just opening up. And so, what's coming, all these light and energy codes are coming in today. So, breathe, 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 breathe. Um, loads of water, breathe, and just and be with the energy. So, we'll talk about. Um, what else is going on? I couldn't sleep last night either. Went to bed at four or five a.m. I know because I was so excited. I wanted to get up and do this, but I was like, I really need to sleep in as well. Um, but I think this is important and I want to do it. And I'm, it might not be slightly consistent because I do have a live training on Friday um, and I am at a house party thing maybe on Saturday night. So the timing of these might be a little erratic, but I'm committing to myself to do it um for all the days and it's just the sun is beaming i think it's gonna be like um 30 something freaking um 34 5 degrees or something here in melbourne today it's just ridiculously hot and um, hey maru love all right so to fill you guys in a little bit about who i am and to what you can request information and exciting stuff on um i 
I know the party. I'll, I'll have to do a live from the party. So um, I've been on, I've been building my business for about four and a half years now. Um, and I've been on the road as a digital nomad for the last three years, over three years now, which is just bananas. Um, and really with no base. And, and that's been a little bit challenging at times. It's not always as glamorous as it sounds. Um, but it has allowed me to travel the world to host events, host retreats, attend a ton of events and a ton of retreats. And the beautiful thing is almost everybody who's on here have actually met in person at a different event or retreat um, while either learning or, um, or you know, sharing some of this, this work that I do. So I've been really lucky that I've met so many of my friends on Facebook in person um, because of the amount of travel I've done. And I feel like it's given me a really solid base um, within myself, within the industry as well, um, that I know all these amazing people actually met them in person, which I love. Um, so with all that traveling, with all the learning, um, my business has really evolved because I've had a massive spiritual awakening and thank you for the hearts. I love it. Um, I've had this massive spiritual awakening while I've been on the road, while I'm planning events, running these retreats, launching programs. And I was just looking at last year and I launched, um, uh, request what sacred objects I use to ground myself. Beautiful. Um, we can talk more about that, but one, um, you're near the beach. I know where you live. I just met you for coffee yesterday. Uh, get your ass to the beach. Uh, feet in the sand, feet on the ground. Um, I love selenite, um, black tourmaline, um, her um, hermitite, is that how you say it? Um, loads of beautiful crystals, um, essential oils. Um, there's a beautiful one I do, doTERRA, um, called Balance, which is a beautiful grounding oil. Um, so lots and lots of different ways, but we can talk more about that later if you like. Um, I'm really passionate about grounding because it's been such a massive lesson for me. Um, and one of the biggest things, so the other thing I wanted to talk about, um, over the next 10 days are trends, um, in the industry, mistakes I'm seeing, um, the biggest problems within the industry and what's happening going forward. Um, we actually just, um, had a big announcement by Facebook that they're stopping us al being allowed to talk about certain things. Um, and, um, and especially with the direction that my business is going, that's going to make things very challenging. So I feel like I'm going to have to be talking in code about things um, to be able to talk about this stuff um, and then freely share within the my closed containers. So it's a really, um, it's a sort of interesting time. It's a challenging time for some of us, especially in this industry um, with all the shifts and changes, but we've got to obviously, you know, not get too scared of it or um, and embrace that as well um, and just assume that the knowledge and the people will still find us if, if whether we can talk about this stuff openly on Instagram and Facebook or not. Um, so my business has evolved <laughs> quite dramatically over the last four years. I won't talk into the whole freaking story because it's too long. Um, but I started out health coaching of all things, which seems randomly ironic at the moment. Um, but that quickly morphed into um, NLP and EFT and doing, I did tons of Tony Robbins work back in the day. Um, so really going into the sort of starting out with the emotional stuff, then the personal development world. Then I had this massive spiritual awakening, um, got really deeply into plant medicine. Um, I started journeying a lot with Cambo um, here in Australia first, then got into other plant medicines, journey to Peru, um, spent some beautiful time down there journeying with a bunch of different um, beautiful plant medicines. And all that's really opened me up and opened up my um, my upper channel, I guess, and got really into the Akashic Records. So I teach people how to read and channel through the Akashic Records, really awaken their intuitive and psychic gifts because we are all intuitive and we are all psychic. Um, but it's it's the level of healing and the, the vibration you can get to which really affects that and the level of information that you can get um, access to within the records and within um, um, within these abilities, right? So if you believe you can, if you're blocked, if your energy's low, um, you can't access these energies. Um, but if you are working on yourself, if you're actively looking at ways to um, change and increase your um, psychic abilities and your vibration, which we'll talk more about as well, because I think it's very miss, um, I don't know, the, I have a lot to say about that. Um, 
especially this whole high vibe movement, I think it's missing a massive piece of the puzzle um, and something that I've been really shifting into. So all of that work through the, the records um, really led me to other embodiment work, um, rewilding work, which is really accessing um, goddess archetypes and working them through your body, um, which has also led me to working with the divine feminine, the divine masculine, sacred union within ourselves, within our businesses, and really bridging that world between business and spirituality um, so we can have aligned businesses, so we can have longevity in this industry. I see so, too many people hustling, burning out, miserable, um, not having enough fun in their business, trapped in fear, um, not knowing the next steps or and sometimes their business makes no sense so I either help people sort of bring them out of the freaking clouds and, and ground them with some you know structure and um, accountability sometimes and sometimes they're so like planning and controlly and um, and sometimes it's then accessing that beautiful feminine energy and the intuitive creative side within their business and allowing more ease and flow in so it's, it's been this beautiful balance um, and the next part of my beautiful own journey has been into sacred sexuality and Tantra. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about this because I want to know more about what is and isn't okay within, within the Facebook rules because I've heard horror stories of people just having their accounts deleted and all this kind of stuff. So we're not going to jump into that necessarily here on my personal Facebook page, but it has been a huge part of my recent journey. Um, and what's been causing so many of my massive shifts. So if you do want to know more about that or you're intrigued about what I've been doing, um, you can um, private message me. I'm usually very open about that stuff, but I just want to be super careful on my, because um, it is personal public page. Um, and again, I have nothing to sell this week and uh, the next 10 days. I just want to chat, be of service um, and share a little bit about who I am, what I've been learning um, and what's been going on. So this year i've been all over the place um mentally emotionally physically um all the things um but also on the planet so i started the year out in sydney uh, and i was just trying to remember like where have i even been and my first stop was sedona arizona um, a beautiful energy portal and one of the things i do with all of this work and the activations and um, the akashic records and all of this massive spiritual awakening is i do planetary grid work so um, I am very intuitively guided by spirit, the divine, whatever the universe, whatever you want to call it, to um, do healing work with the planet, with the energies of the planet. Um, this might sound a bit nuts and that's okay. Um, I was like, I didn't realize I've been doing it. I've been actually doing it completely unconsciously for a long time. And now I'm more aware of what I'm doing and what I've been called to do. Um, which has been an absolutely beautiful gift. So um, if that is like talking another language, that's okay. Um, so just imagine it, you know, our body has chakras. I think everybody now knows what that was. I was just laughing back in 2010 when I started doing, when I did my first kind of regression work, I didn't even know what a chakra was. I remember the guy was like, oh, I'm gonna have to make sure your chakras are open before we do this um, uh, constellations work. And I was like, I don't know what the fuck a chakra is and I don't know how he's going to check they're open and if they're not open I don't know how I'm going to open them um, to allow him to do this work so I was like kind of fingers crossed they're open enough that he can do this because I didn't even know what the heck they were. Mm. And our body has different energy centers um, traditionally we've got seven energy centers um, there are actually at least 12 if not more above us, below us, um, but the, the common ones that we talk about um, are our seven sort of um, main chakras, root, sacral, solar plexus, heart, um, throat, third eye, um, and your crown chakra. And these are all joined and we have, you know, if you've ever gone for acupuncture, um, you know that your body has meridian lines and we have acupressure points, which are all joined up by meridian lines and you want your energy to be flowing um, clearly within your chakras and clearly within your um, body's energy lines. That's our life force, that chi energy. And I didn't realize, well, I do obviously now because that's what I do, but the, the planet has chakras and the planet has um, meridian lines too. So they're just called ley lines um, most in most places in the world. And so 
and just like you would go for you know chakra alignment do a chakra meditation alignment for your body go for acupuncture um kinesiology whatever you do to manage those systems within yourself um the planet does too and so the planet has chakras and ley lines and it needs help healing and balancing them too and so that's part of um the reason i have been all over the freaking place for the last few years um, and a lot of my friends do this work as well. I'm definitely not the only person. There's a whole crew of us that do this. Um, some consciously working in tandem, some unconsciously working in tandem, um, just doing the work. Um, and it's ironic how some of my good friends who have also been nomadic have been doing this work. And then when we compare stories and experiences, um, they're so aligned and so spookily um, the same that it's, it just blows my mind. So, um, yeah, so it's not just me, there's a whole crew of us, you might be doing it yourself and not even know, um, but it's really, I get called to these next places. So I spent a month in Sedona um, in March, then I went, where did I go after that? Then I went to Colorado, to Boulder, um, did some work up there. Then I went to Boise, Idaho for a conference. Then I went back to Scotland because my sister had a baby. Uh, then where did I go from there? Um, then I went to Estonia for a month. And then I went to London and then I went to Stonehenge and Glastonbury and then I was up in Rosalind Chapel back in Scotland over the summer. It's really doing a beautiful sacred site journey and doing lots of clearing and beautiful energy work on these sacred sites. Um, then I traveled back through Dubai. That's a whole nother story I won't get into. Um, really working with these energies and sacred codes and abundance work. Um, and the abundance work is one of the things I went, um, I was worked in Dubai um, for 10 days I did some I did three workshops while I was there all about abundance um, releasing money blocks quantum leaping the Akashic records um, so it was a real um, like honor to be there and to be working with the people there because it was just I felt very called that I had to be there to be doing that work this year um, and then from Dubai I went to um, oh I hosted two retreats in Sedona um, then went to Bali hosted another retreat for my clients and I was there for a month doing some massive energetic clearing, which is pretty intense. Then went to A-Fest in Bali, uh, 10 days in Sydney, and then came to Melbourne to do a two week intensive um, dive into the world of sacred sexuality, which was just crazy and rocked my world. So that's what I've been up to this year. It's been super crazy, intense. Um, and at the same time managed to, I think did five launches, launched four new programs and, you know, running retreats and all this kind of stuff. So um, I still managed to achieve a lot while I'm on the road, while I'm having all these massive shifts and awakenings. Um, so yeah, it's been a pretty intense year. I know for, not just for me, but for everybody. Um, so what we're gonna cover over the next few days, we're gonna talk about preparing for 2019. We're gonna talk about this beautiful portal. Um, all these energies that are coming through, it's very aligned with the numerology of it, obviously 1212, we had 1111, um, and we're coming up to this beautiful um, solstice energy on the 22nd of um, December. So we've got this beautiful 10 days, and for me, this energy, um, and you can ask questions, um, whatever, if there's anything I say that you've not heard of, or you think I'm talking, nuts or whatever just let me know um i'm happy to clarify this a lot of this stuff was so foreign to me um not that long ago and and some of the stuff that um i've been shifting through and going through it just I, it would have been not even possible um weeks ago months ago um years ago so um big shifts and changes have been happening so if anything's not clear just chuck a comment in in below um but this this portal is twenty like up to twenty two twelve, is really about the completion, right? We've been through such turmoil. Anybody else? Chuck an emoji in, um, that represents twenty eighteen. Like, how have you been feeling? Um, how has twenty eighteen been for you, right? Because we all we thought we'd had enough of it. Like 2016, 2017, we're like, fuck this, I'm done. Like, it feels so um, it felt so heavy. I was like, twenty eighteen is gonna be so fresh and easy and. I'm just gonna like, you know, roll through it with no major dramas, right? Um, right, really good, yeah, it's feeling that emoji, that's like my emoji of the last um, few weeks is that brain melting one. So 
<laughs> right, Hannah? Like, gr- they, these girls were in um, one of my six-month programs that we ran this summer, and it was it was just different from any other program I've run. We went so deep um, into some of this this healing work. Like, it was just wild. Like, it was a really, it was very different from a business mastermind. We just had to just, like, there was so much stuff going on. We just had to do did some massive healing work. So just honoring you girls for like showing up and doing this work and um, and keeping showing up because it's been really, really tough, um, but awesome at the same time. So in this beautiful portal, if we, if you know, you might not be into numerology, but um, we, do you remember back in 2012? So the energy of now is very like 2012. Now I'm not an astrologer, um, but I do, I look at trends and themes and I just notice how my life and my clients' lives all seem to line up perfectly with the greater energetics of what's going on in the planet. And when you can understand at a deeper level the energetics of what's going on for the planet, for the universe. Um, oh my God, Anushka. Oh my God. Is there, what, can you, is there any happy emojis? There must have been a good one good one. Um, yeah, that's pretty intense shit, right? So, um, you know, we've been going through a lot and, and if you've been feeling that and you might not have been doing this work, you might not have had help from a coach or a healer or, you know, I've seen so many different people because this stuff has just been coming up and there's almost like nothing we can do to to stop the, the, the stuff coming up, right? Um, right, feeling you girls. It's been very challenging and raw, but the best thing I've done, um, right? I can't read the rest of your comment. I'll come back to it, Melissa. Um, yeah, it's just been fucking, it's been nuts. It's been so crazy. Um, and just every time I think I'm done, there's like another wave and more energy and you're like, oh my gosh, like what is going on? Does this ever end? Um, and in the summer I was like, okay, like we've got out of this eclipse season, surely I'm done for the year. Then I get to Bali and it's Venus retrograde. And I'm like, oh my God, like surely there can't be more. And I went into my, um, the, this Tantra retreat really feeling like I'm solid. Like I don't think I have much to clear, which is, you know, the biggest irony. And as soon as you go into any kind of like ego around that, like they're like, boom, smack, here, here's all your stuff. Right. Um, and you're the Akashic Records happened in 2018. Yes, I know. Um, you're in my program. It's, it's just, it's been, that has been one of my most unexpected and favorite things of the year as well. Like I wasn't planning on teaching it, creating programs, but it just came through so naturally and organically that without really a proper sales page, without anything, um, without a launch, um, since August, I put over 70 people through that program, which um, just blows my mind. Um, and people have just been having the biggest breakthroughs and shifts and ahas. And um, it's been such a blessing. Like I had no intention of, of teaching it. Um, and then when I was going through my old notes from the first time I did a course on it, um, one of the things you do is you close, you know, you chat, you tune in and open your Akashic records. And one of the first things I wrote in my in my um, workbook, which I still have with me, is I, the, I asked the question, why am I here? Why am I learning this? Why am I you know, doing this work at this moment? And it was because you will teach it. And obviously I'd written it down and dismissed it completely you know, on day one of the course of learning this. And then a couple of years later, after working with them intensively for a couple of years, it came back around. I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to teach this. Interesting. Um, so it's always funny how, how these things come around um, and it just happens so fast. So yeah, sometimes, you know, we, we can talk about 2019 and planning for this coming year, but at the same time, sometimes we have no idea um, what's going to come through and what's happening in our world and our field. And um, I'm all for a decent plan and, and knowing what you want to do and, and creating, you know, you know, launch plans and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, leaving space for flow, leaving space for, you know, inspiration and changes of plan and all that kind of good stuff. Um, oh, thank you, Melissa. Taught it so well. It was a game changer. Like, it, it just they just are a game changer. They're absolutely phenomenal. Anyway, I can tell you more about that on another one if you guys are interested. Um, but I want this to be, again, about what you need and what you want. So what 
are some of the things you want me to talk about? So we've talked, we've got grounding, we've got um, integration. Um, so just let me know in the comments if there is anything you want me to, to bring through and talk about. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep going with what seems like the most relevant things. Um, so I was talking about 2012. Now, um, there was all this chat that 20, on the solstice of 2012, randomly my dad's birthday as well um yeah people very special people get born on solstices um and random holidays and looking at funny that key people um are either born on the solstices or um or other portal times so it's really interesting um but anyways um what were we talking about oh yeah 2012 so Everybody was freaking out in 2012 that the Mayan calendar um, was ending. There was nothing beyond that, nothing beyond the solstice of 2012. And there were people sort of driving out to places like Sedona, like, you know, waiting to be, you know, teleported by, you know, a UFO to the, to the other side or whatever. Um, and, and nothing happened, really. Um, but the, the reason that the calendar finished was because it was this massive um, time shift. It was this massive, um, we went from the it was Piscean age into the age of Aquarian. Um, and so the world has, you know, we're on cycles, we work with astrology, you know, our, our calendar year goes through um, the different points in the chart and so does the earth. And so what actually was finishing was this like age old rule of the patriarchy. We've had the rise of the beautiful divine feminine and um, which does not mean all about women, not about the guys, by the way, but that's, and we might talk about that on another day. Um, so we've had this beautiful rise and this consciousness coming through. Um, and a lot of people started awakening in 2012. Um, I know it was for me around that time was um, a big shift, a big change. Like it happened for me, I started awakening, I guess, when I read The Secret maybe in 20, 20, 2006. Um, I got really excited about that. Then I had another big shift in, in 2010 when I started doing different regression work. I spent a lot of time in Thailand. Um, but 2012 was like really big and I feel like a lot of people started businesses in 2012, they quit their jobs um, and it was really this this time of like questioning and changing and, um, and, and really ending old ways of being and patterns and all that kind of stuff. So um, for me, I probably should have quit my job in 2012, but I struggled um, on with it for a bit longer. Um, and it wasn't until I had a bit of a wake up at the end of 2013 that I actually got the sort of nudge and the push to to do something different, to create a change and to quit my job. Um, so you're starting to notice people coming on, different people come online, um, sort of awaken, you know, start to become more spiritual, start to question things um, in waves. And so this sort of 20, 2006, then 2012, um, and there's been a steady progression. If I always imagine it like, um, you know, the bell, a bell curve, right? If anyone study, I studied stats at uni, of course I did. Um, so imagine your bell curve of like the, um, when, when people like early adopt, I always like to um, use the like iPhone example, right? Um, you've always got your super early adopters who are like queuing up outside the eye, the eye store like the day before the, the first thing is, is um, issued. Then you've got your people who um, will just order it online and it arrives the next day because they don't want to queue up overnight outside the eye store. Then they've got the people that will wait until their phone breaks or their contract is up to get the latest version. And then you get the people who maybe like my mother still have a Blackberry or something um, and just refuse to get, I know she's actually got her first smartphone because my sis, it's my sister's old one, right? But but it wasn't until, you know, like sort of resistance, it was, was more, was futile, right? Um, that they start to come online and then everybody, you know, eventually will have a smartphone because the old ones won't work anymore. Like remember when the, they were like, hey guys, I'm sorry, analog TVs, we're just not even going to send that signal out anymore. Um, and people had to get digital TVs. They had they because they literally could not, even if they wanted to hang on to their old analog one, um, they couldn't. 
So we have this, I'm trying to think which direction you'll see it in. Um, so imagine the bell curve, right? And so if we've got the, the, the really early adopters, maybe the hippies um, in the 60s, um, and then sort of gradually we're sort of waking up. And as if you sort of had your awakening, whatever, um, earlier, you know, it's, it's to be a way short. It's to be somebody that can help other people who are coming online, who are starting to be like, what the fuck is going on? Like, nothing is quite what it seems. We're really here to be um, a guide for for these people, you know, who are waking up, coming online, starting to ask more questions and starting to be like, oh, wait, maybe it's not all about linear time and maybe, you know, maybe things are different. And hey, what is this stuff about meditation? And um, what the fuck are you talking about this 5D stuff? So there is this... Um, there is this sort of global shift and more people are questioning and more people are um, wondering what the heck is happening. And the beautiful thing about all this is um, it's not, so I feel like I have to start take a few steps back. So we've been living in this 5D reality, right? Um, no, I'm gonna complete the other piece. So the 20, I was talking about 2012. So if in 2012, something shifted within you, if you had this kind of, um, awakening right for want of a better word um, you know things started changing you started asking questions maybe you were miserable in your job maybe you were like I need to do you know something that lights me up something from the heart like my sole purpose right like start wondering what that is start wondering what your sole purpose is if you started that in 2012 it might have been a, a sort of just a rumbling that things aren't quite right um, you are definitely in this this portal, um, this 10 days I'm going to be talking about and talking to these things and explaining more about it. Um, it's, your, it's your freaking time, right? Like there's no point in denying it anymore, right? There's You cannot ignore it anymore. So if something awoke for you, um, it's going to be similar energies in this next portal, right? So if you can think back what you were doing when you thought the world was going to maybe end, um, where were you that that Christmas? What was going on for you? What were the themes coming up for you? Um, if you can kind of think back to that energy and then go, oh, hang on, the same freaking thing is happening now, um, you might start to see parallels. Um, and if you can't remember what that was, that's totally fine. You will be shown um, quite clearly. So the other theme that's happening is um, if you're having the same issues come up over and over again, right? So I see a lot of people, oh, I'm doing all my work. I've dealt with my mummy issues, my daddy issues or whatever, right? Um, I, I get that quite a lot. People are like, oh, I've done this work already. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So how is that showing up in your life? Like what's different, what's changed? And you're like, oh, well, I'm still not making money or I'm still having like relationship issues or I'm still, you know, not happy with X, Y, and Z, right? And so I'm like, okay, so maybe there's some more work to do, right? So um, that happens, right? And ego, our ego gets in the way, right? I've got one too, right? Um, like when I went into that um, container over the last few weeks and I was like, I, don't, I think I'm good. I think I've cleared everything I need to clear for this year. Oh gosh, I had, it didn't even hadn't even started. Um, oh, interesting. You went vegetarian Christmas twenty twelve. Interesting. Um, so yeah, that's the start of a big shift. That's really interesting. Um, so yeah, if anyone knows what they're up to Christmas twenty twelve, let me know. Um, but yeah, I remember that time. I remember that conversation about things ending and the world ending and. Um, you gave birth. I love it in 2012. So yeah, I bet you had a little conscious baby who's probably taught you all sorts of amazing different lessons, <laughs> right? Um, so yeah, big thing, big things were happening. So if you've had that nudge and that call and that like, oh, I need to be doing something, something's not right. I'm not happy. Like now is the freaking time to change it. Like there's, you're not going to get the opportunity to continue in these old patterns and continue being in this state any longer. Like literally you're going to be slapped in the face um, and you're going to have to shift it and you're going to have to let it go. And 
a few different ways and reasons this happens like we still have the same issues over and over and like if you haven't quite learned the lesson it's going to keep coming back and you know there's layers to this onion um highly intuitive and very connected little soul oh my gosh i love it and you know the children are giving me hope for the future they they just are right like you know as hu humanity we have we could end us it's not nobody else is is you know going to wipe us off the face of the planet um except ourselves right um we talk about healing mama earth and gaia she is just fine um she's like i got this covered guys you guys are screwed um so yeah so but our the children coming through these beautiful star seeds and gorgeous souls um are, are really giving me giving me hope but one of a couple of the, uh, the issues going on are that these beautiful highly intuitive sensitive souls um not i don't know anything about your your child um charlene but are just in general are being thrown into the regular school system and they're being put into you know um classes and they're bored but they're being diagnosed with add and put on medication and they're actually just these beautiful um, highly intuitive, sensitive souls coming in to help teach us and heal us. Um, so that's a big, big, big issue because they're not being nurtured because they're being thrown in this ancient school system that's um, just not equipped and it's just way too archaic um, for these beautiful beings coming in. Um, anyway, we digress. So talk about 2012, the shifts. Like, you just don't have... Oh, you had a breakdown on Christmas Day 2012. It was miserable. Spent it alone working my corporate job. Oh, I can't see any more on the comments, but shit, right? Like, so, again, knowing a little bit about what's going on in your life, like, we need to complete this cycle, right? It is, we are done. You're homeschooling next year, right? There's such a massive trend in homeschooling going on. Um, there, we've obviously got, we've got Montessori and... Steiner schools. I just um, had a long chat with a guy who's training to be a Steiner um, teacher. Um, so yeah, there's people are just looking for other options because um, the old way doesn't work anymore. And that's not just within our schooling system. It's within our businesses. It's within our lives, right? So if you've been hanging on to your old behavior and your old ways of being and even your old values and belief systems, they are not going to work going forward into 2019, right? That's just such a beautiful example of the children in the school system. Like it's not an option, right? Like it's just not happening. So if you're still clinging on to this old stuff and this old way of being, um, now is the time, this portal, we have a beautiful healing window, these 10 days, it is time, it is time, it is time. Let's make some massive decisions um, to shift and change this. The energy 2018 has been the same struggle energy of 2012, right? Massively. So it is time to, to make these decisions, to change, to shift, to no longer allow this to be your way of being, right? Um, I mentioned in my last post, I've been sort of sitting in this void space because so much has changed and cleared. And that's why I'm sort of sitting in the space of like, okay, what's next? Who am I? I don't have anything to sell today, right? Like, because I'm not sure what that next evolution is going to quite look like yet. And I'm sitting in this like beautiful space of like allowing it to brew and bubble up and um, allow it to come through. Like, I know there's going to be more retreats. I know it's more about the body work. I know it's more about the sexuality and the sensuality. Um, massive decisions, elaborate. How would you recommend? Um, so can you give me an example maybe of something that's going on for you, love? And I can give you um, a little bit of guidance. So so in this window, you know, we're, we're, I talked about this light coming through, these beautiful healing energies. And um, it's giving us the opportunity to help us through this window of completion um and healing right so we're being given like it's like the universe is like cheering us on like come on like time to let this shit go time to time to shift time to change let's complete things so you know when i talk about sitting between these two worlds and in this void it's been a huge time of completion um like courses have wrapped up clients have wrapped up um I finally like i have a house sale going through um, lots and lots of different things, outstanding 
things that I hadn't been dealing with, I finally have this amazing energy where I just want to complete things. I want to do paperwork. I want to like finally, cause like being a nomad, that's one of the things that can like fall away from me. Um, so, you know, like applying for new passports and like, um, just taking care of things. Like I'm going to spend, um, probably a month, like six weeks in Thailand, um, doing more and more of this, um, embodiment work. And I needed to go to my Thai visa and um, I went and did that yesterday. So like, it's just like things that have been on your list for ages that you haven't been doing or ways of being that you're just frustrated and fed up with, like complete them. Like it's time to just tie up all the loose ends, like complete, complete, complete. Um, and that might be letting go of a relationship or a friendship or, um, you know, a habit or, um, something that isn't serving you and is not going to continue to serve you in 2019. So just as a sort of other little overview, let me come in. Welcome anyone who's just joined. So um, just to sort of give you a quick heads up, I'm just going to do, I'm doing this 10 day challenge, partly for me just to get back into um, sharing and speaking and, and bringing and, you know, helping people. Um, and also I want this to be a gift for you guys um, and cover whatever you need. Let me just um, see from my business direction, expanding to my gifts, clients to get power to leave outlived relationships. Uh, please come to KP. Where is it? Copenhagen? That's where I'm coming. Um, Thai embassy for me this week as well. So I was at the Thai embassy yesterday. Um, I'm literally, um, if that's where you are, if KP is Copenhagen. Um, so yeah, I've just been accepted to assist on um, a program there, a retreat all about sacred sexuality. Um, so I'm really excited to deep in, into that work and hold space for it and, and learn from, from some new teachers as well. Um, okay, so taking another step back. Um, so just in case some people are like, I'm still not 100% sure what the heck you're on about. Um, and keep asking questions. If something is coming up, like let me know. Um, but exactly what you were you mentioned there, um, Irina. I hope I'm saying your name right. Um, if you have not, if you know that you have a soul purpose, and if you know that you have gifts, whether they are healing gifts, intuitive gifts, um, or just being awesome gifts, or creative gifts, or whatever that is, like you're being called to step into them like that's the other piece like denying them and you've known you've been denying them since 2012 most of you um or longer it's just not an option anymore right like we're like oh like yesterday when i was like oh my gosh i've not been speaking i've not been sharing i've not been speaking my truth like my body was like oh like so excited to come and do this because i was like oh it's time like i've been like too quiet for too long I've not been sharing I've not been speaking like it's so important for me to be doing this now and so part of this challenge is just for me to get back into the habit to actually share this stuff because I do this all the time behind the scenes and in my programs but I haven't been doing it live in public and my programs I've sold this year I've done it without doing anything live pretty much I've done it without speaking which is again amazing but not ideal <laughs> um so let me see what are you guys saying i can't see the comments let me scroll down um sarita and anahata uh not sure if they're people or places um but no um okay so what we're we talking about oh yeah 3d um so this shift and change that we've been going through and um there's a talk about the gate to the 5D closing on the solstice, right? It doesn't mean that, you know, suddenly the world will end or people will like um, die or anything like that. There's a lot of like scaremongering happening. Um, that's not the case, um, but it's like, okay, when is enough enough and when are you gonna do it? And when are you just gonna get on with it? Um, and when are you gonna own this shit? And when are you gonna own your power? And when are you gonna own your voice, right? So there's this, this feeling, it's like, what needs to be completed so as you can go ahead and do that, right? What needs to be completed so as you can step into this, this role and make your life a bit easier, right? Because we all know that resistance is where the pain is, right? Not doing it is where the pain is, right? Especially if it's this beautiful soul calling that's coming through. So the 3D world is what we've all been experiencing. It's um, what we've grown up in, when time is linear, where the past is the past, we think the future is the future. It's very 
egotistical, materialistic, you know, what have you got versus what have I got? It's comparison-itis, it's judgment, um, it's fear, fear of um, all the things, right? It's fear of judgments, resentment, failure, success, um, other people, um, things been taken from you, um, all this kind of stuff. So the 3D world, it's very dense, It's um, and it's what we've known, but time is like slower, right? So um, even if we just look back at like, you know, people, in the early 1900s, you know, they were in jobs for life, right? Like 50 years in, in one job, in one role, in one company. Can you, you can't even imagine that nowadays, right? But, and, but for them, they weren't all bored and miserable and upset and like feeling like they needed to be somewhere else. They were quite satisfied, right? Like apparently, not that I know everybody that was, that was going on, but there wasn't that big need to be doing something else, right? They were quite satisfied with feeling with the safety, right? And so this, this 3D world is about safety and um, feeling safe. And so they, they seemed quite happy with that, um, with that being their life and their paradigm. And, and now um, this shift into 5D, it's where the, the vibration is increasing. So people talk about high vibe all the time. And it's really the, the elevation of the frequency of our planet and ourselves. So the planet is literally, like the Schumann resonance of the planet is literally rising. And it's, we've had these energetic spikes um, happening that have been bigger than ever in recorded history. And it's all been coming through in the last seven, eight years specifically, more than any other time. So like these, these massive energetic waves and shifts coming through are kind of forcing the the increase in vibration, forcing the shift into 5D and forcing it within our bodies because at this higher vibration that the planet is going to, we cannot hold on to the lower frequency energetics that we just can't. And the lower frequency things are the shame, the guilt, the fear, apathy, um, all this kind of like lower gunky energy. And we're seeing this global shift. We're seeing the me too, like globally, we can't suppress those energies anymore, right? Like people are being outed, right? Because this energy cannot survive at the higher frequencies, it's having to come up, it's having to come out, it's having to be cleared. And this is why we've got such a massive crisis worldwide with opioids, right? In the US specifically, right? Alcoholism is off the charts. People doing drugs is off the charts because you know as woke people are not the only ones that have been experiencing this and luckily we have healers and um coaches and you know therapists and all these different you know avenues on and friends that are also getting it to talk about our emotions to process our emotions and so we have all these beautiful tools and i can't even imagine trying to get through the last um eight years or four years or two years without these skills and without the resources to be able to tap into these beautiful healers and teachers and um, and different methods that I use all the time. Um, and so if this sort of normal human is, is also having all these emotions and stuff coming up, they don't have the skills and tools and the awareness of what to do about it. So what do they do? They try and shove them back down again by drinking more, by suppressing, um, by, by taking prescription medications and all this other stuff. So it's really just the symptoms of the time, right? Like it's symptoms of what's going on globally. Um, but we have this beautiful opportunity for ourselves to like, to shift through it and to deal with it and to, to move through it. Um, but I just want to talk about a little bit. I talked about um, not... So as this happens, actually, we're going to talk about that for a second. As this happens and this shift and this this rise happens very naturally on the planet, um, people can feel like the world is falling apart, right? We get what's called ascension symptoms. So as we ascend, um, it is like a giant detox for the body, right? So all of these negative emotions, the guilt, the shame, the fear, is all stored in our bodies. It's stored in the tissues of our bodies. And I believe it's why we get sick, right? It's the absolute source of 99.9% .9 of sickness. I've, I have a lot to say about alcoholics, addicts, and woke. would love to speak to you sometime. Cool. Um, yeah, so there's just a lot of stuff going on and, you know, um, yeah, it's a big deal. I basically sedated myself through my 20s with alcohol. Um, 
and I almost never drink anymore. I might have a glass or two and then regret it, but my body can't handle it because my body's going through this massive shift into this higher vibration. I can't process that toxicity and my body just doesn't want it in my body. So people, um, when you clear and shift through these energies, um, whether you want to or not, you might have ascension symptoms, which is very much a bit like, um, what you get when you're detoxing you know if you go and you come off coffee and you get a headache or you um i went to thailand and detoxed and like my skin broke out um because the toxins as you clear these energies are trying to come out of your system as quickly as possible so when i'm you work with my clients i'm always saying hey after our session this is like a massive um detox drink tons of water have a salt bath like do whatever you can to like shift um the stuff physically out of your body because it's not like just a, a sort of mental shift like this is a physical um a physical thing that's happening so um yeah so ascension symptoms like people are starting to experience like i mentioned right at the very beginning i was seeing a lot of light last night coming through my body was buzzing my hands were buzzing i've literally had like what feels like shock waves run through my whole body shoot out my hands um uh and let me i'll come back to that so ringing in the ears has been massive last night at 1 11 a.m the ringing in my ears was like deafening um, so you might be, so people are going to the doctors thinking they have like tinnitus and like all these um, issues when it's actually just like the spiritual wake up call. They're like, hello people, hello. Um, you might be needing to sleep a lot more, right? These energies are taking a lot to upgrade us and we're, we're um, often upgrading at these higher spiritual realms and your body needs some time to catch up. So you might feel more tired. You might feel like you need to drink more water. In fact, I'm going to keep doing that. You might feel more tired, like you're sleeping like 12 hours and you can't understand it. You might have a cold. Um, again, that's just the gunk trying to get out of your body as quickly as humanly possible. So all of these things are happening. You might start to see different types of light coming through, different colors you've never experienced before. The world might seem brighter. Um, so there are all these different shifts. You might even have like heart, like palpitations. You might feel pains in your body. Um, all of this stuff is like this energy needing to come up, needing to come out um, of your body, right? Um, so Charlene saying she stopped drinking. Meat is next, not forced. Very natural shift. I hardly eat any meat either. I don't want to label myself. I don't want to be like I'm vegetarian or a pescatarian. I just don't want to do it a label to it um because I, I will uh, eat meat um continue to but i just don't want it as much i don't cook it i don't need it um and so what some of the guidance that's been coming through is that especially stop the heavy meats um red red meat pork that kind of thing um obviously if you're going to do meat do organic um free range all that kind of stuff but sort of the lighter organic chicken not good for my blood type but if it works for you great um again fish if it's sustainable yada yada um but yeah it's just a very natural shift because our bodies and these higher vibrations our bodies are talk about coming less dense and people talk about activating their light bodies like we're literally becoming lighter like we want to eat less like we're not as um we don't need as much food to survive people are actually shifting on to more liquid diets right even the rise of the smoothie and the bulletproof coffee and intermittent fasting like people just aren't feeling like they need as much food anymore um because our bodies are becoming lighter and if you talk we talk about the ultimate ascension um we're gonna sort of disappear anyway but and um, so that shift is very natural and um if you've been noticing it um that's cool. So yeah, if you're sleeping tons, um, Katrina says she's sleeping loads. Um, Anushka sleeping loads, always wanting to nap. Yeah, I've become a napper and I never used to nap before. Um, and yeah, Arena's saying sugar grinds you down too. I know I, I often joke in my in my content, I'm like, chocolate is grounding people, it's okay. Um, that's the one thing I've actually been eating more of is chocolate because it does ground us and I think my body's just been like ground me ground me um so I'm doing a lot more grinding so I don't necessarily need this the chocolate and the the sugars to ground me 
um, one of the things I did when I, before going on this course, like the, all the food was included, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to take a ton of chocolate with me. What if they don't feed me chocolate for the next two weeks? What am I going to do? Um, but I chose not to take the chocolate because I thought that's my old pattern. That's my go-to. Um, what if I assume they're going to feed me everything I need and I assume that what I need to do is be able to ground this down without eating copious amounts of chocolate. Um, sugar has still got you though and and that's okay right like I'm I'm not saying that I don't eat chocolate anymore um, I'm still still on it right but you're it's probably your body looking for more ways to ground this energy down right so get outside feet in the grass get on the beach um, I sleep without a grounding sleep mat as well so lots of different options um energetic nurturing yes all this kind of amazing stuff intense cravings especially for chocolate right so let's blame the ascension symptoms for our chocolate cravings <laughs> um physical exercise and sex grounds massive yes yes 100 percent. so getting in this is all about for me the massive shift in the last few years it's and i'm gonna probably bang on about this this week um i think mindset is like halfway not even halfway there um i think meditation is a lot of spiritual bypass um i think light worker is nonsense like so for me i've been um like the the darker denser like um energies um and the body work has been just so important i don't think we can get away with it anymore um so moving these energies and physically shifting it through your body through breath sound movement um, exercise, dance, sex, all that stuff, massively important. The last, um, the last few weeks has all been around me and my root chakra and really, um, shifting that massively. It's late in Europe, going to bed. All right. I see you soon, girl. I love you too. Um, all right. So yeah, I don't know how, I have no concept of how long I've been on here, probably way too long for day one. Um, Oh, I just want to complete one thing because I keep getting sidetracked by the comments. Thank you for the comments. I love them. Um, uh, the, so we talked about that 3D denser energy, this lightness rising up, um, all the stuff that comes out as we rise up. But what the heck are we rising up to? That is the question. Um, so 5D is the question. Fifth density. Um, or fifth dimension, which is actually the fourth density. But anyway um this 5d re new reality what is it why do we even want to go there maybe you're quite happy where you are that's cool too um so the fifth dimension is love it is competent it's not competition it's um collaboration over competition you know good old hashtag it's a place where you know we support each other and time is non-linear time is bendy time doesn't even exist in 5d um so it's a place where quantum leaps happen, where flow happens, where synchronicities happen. Um, and 5D is just awesome. Um, so we all want to get to 5D. I don't like it. Well, some people don't want to come, but that's because they don't want to deal with this little gap in between 3D and 5D and having to deal with their shit. So they're trying to like push it, suppress it. Um, but this, so everybody is sort of coming online in this massive bell shape. So that big chunk of people in the middle are coming online and it's, I think it's going to continue to happen until about 2026, really. Um, by then, the whole world will be woke as fuck. Um, but yeah, so the big shifts are happening. 5D is just a beautiful place. It's abundance. It's not fear. Uh, it's love and, and just a really gorgeous place. So people are craving more community, more collaborations, more... Um, you know, I'm seeing people living and creating homes together and, you know, wanting that that connection again and, and coming from a beautiful place of um, collaboration and, and not anything else. Um, okay, so I think that's gonna be it for today. Um, we're gonna talk more about this over the course of the next 10 days. I hope you will join me. Um, if you have any special requests, let me know. And yeah, we'll just get into it. And if you have, yeah, specific questions or whatever, um, let me know and we'll, I'm happy to dive into them and, um, and just bring through whatever needs to be brought through. I'll tune into what's alive on the day because I think the next 10 days could be quite crazy energetically. So I'll tune into what I think we need um, and we'll take it from there. All right. Um, so like I said, just want to do this 
for you, for me. Um, yeah, that's all. That's it really. Okay, lovelies. Well, thank you for being here. Um, if you're watching this on a replay, um, if you have questions, just fire them below. Um, and I love it. If, if you don't agree, that's fine too, right? Um, I'm not here for all of you to agree. Um, if you don't agree, that's fine. Ask the question. Um, if you are sitting in judgment of this, <gasps> I'm lovingly calling you out. If you were sitting there like, she's nuts, bananas, bullshit, whatever. If you're sitting in judgment, that's okay too. Um, I'd be shocked if you'd lasted this long in the video if you were. But if that, this portal requires non-judgment. If you want to shift things, you've got to stop judging yourself and, and me too, right? Like, um, I don't really care because <laughs> I know how important this is. Um, but there's always a shadow underneath that. So one, a couple of the things, actually, I'll read you my list of things I wanted to talk about over the next 10 days. Um, one was shadow and self-righteousness because that's where the shadow is. You can't see it. If you think you know what your shadow is, you haven't got a clue. Um, victim stuff, we're going to talk about that. Um, what else have we got? Um, I've got claiming your power back, embracing the darkness. I'm all about the darkness. Um, Non-attachment to your story and to things and people. I think we get so attached. Um responsibility, desires, asking for them, more about the energy, um, doing activations, meditations, um, belonging, healing your story, how to do that, um, manifesting, like some of the secrets to manifesting. Um, and like I mentioned before, we'll do talk about some trends and mistakes and things that are going on. So if you want to add more to my little list, um, feel free, we'll, we can talk about whatever you like. Um, but that was my little list of things that I was sort of feeling into that seems to be um, the most alive stuff. We can talk about more about what the Akashic Records are and all that kind of good stuff. Um, the darkness. Oh, man. So I'm like, I'm so now, I'm like this whole light worker nonsense. I'm like, again, half the story, not even, not even close, right? Like we've got to embrace. I'm so into the dark stuff. I'm so much more comfortable in my darkness than anything else. Um, when did I start my spiritual journey? Mm, a very good question. Um, I just mentioned it earlier. Like I sort of did the whole, got it all excited about the secret in 26, 2006. Went to Thailand in 2010. Did my first inner work. I did family constellations, regression work regress back to being a witch back in 2010 didn't tell anybody because i thought i was crazy um so did a bunch of that work back in 2010 um but really um really big stuff has been the last three years three four years um obviously there's been other pieces along the way but the big big stuff has been the last three or four years um, so excited to your list, how to process and how to chat to your higher self. Oh yeah, we could talk about that. Um, cool. I'm an open book, but I do think we need to talk about the darkness and the, and even the dark within the light. I mean, there's so much shadowy shit going on. Um, so unintegrated. Um, oh, you're a Scorpio. I am a Scorpio. Um, and I have a ton of Pluto in my chart. And so my Scorpio side and the darkness I fucking love it um and it's all the taboo shady stuff right that nobody wants to talk about um and my Scorpio kind of wants to stay all secret and silent which is what I've been doing a lot this year but I actually have a Leo moon that wants to talk about all this stuff so I'm constantly in this like push pull between these two sides of me and my chart is always about extremes and they're like oh here's one side here's the other thing like so I'm always in this like pull between these two extremes and honoring both sides of that, like the dark, the dark stuff. Um, and I've been diving really deep into the dark stuff for the last couple of years. And, but it's been heightened um, even more recently. Um, so yes, the dark and the taboo is coming. And dark doesn't mean bad, by the way. Um, dark is just a different, energy it doesn't mean bad 
And I think people think dark is bad, but dark is not bad. Um, dark is this shit that everybody wants, but no, <laughs> nobody will admit. <laughs> That's what the dark stuff is, right? And so it gets pushed into the shadows and it gets um, gets pushed down and, and made bad, but it's really not. Um, so yeah, it's a big part of part of the journey at the moment. Um, but yeah, but also wherever you are is perfect. All right, so I will speak to you all soon. Um, and yeah, we'll have a fun 10 days. I'm excited. And, um, oh, hey, Stacy, I love you, girl. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll have a fun 10 days. And, yeah, any questions, let me know. All right, take care, you guys. Bye.